So yesterday, a man climbed over the railing at the Bellagio Fountains, swam out to the center, and passed away. I'm not making anything up that's not from theonion.com. That is a real thing that happened. It is a real tragedy. And in this video, we have to describe what actually happened, what the possibilities could have been of it actually being caused, what actually caused all this. Plus, we're going to take a look at what happens when, under normal circumstances, somebody crawls up on that railing. Why didn't Bellagio security go out and retrieve the man? What could have possibly happened to prevent all this? Because I have experiences standing in front of that fountain like nobody else, and I've seen people go into the fountain before, and I've also been accosted by security just standing standing there for four minutes sitting doing a video. I have some experiences to share with you. My name is Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. I hope you would like, share, subscribe to the videos, hit the bell for the future notifications, leave us a comment below, and let us know what you think about the situation. Do you hold the Bellagio accountable? Do you think the tourists put him up to it? Do you think the man was just not in his right mind temporarily? Or do you think it could have been prevented? So you tell me in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel, reach out to us on Patreon. You guys can see early access to videos, photos, blog posts I don't do anywhere else. You guys can also be in the credits of the video. We also have VegasFaceMask.com. It is baseball season. The aviators didn't get to play this year, but we do have baseball season. Go to VegasFaceMask.com. The only two masks you'll ever need. My wife makes them right here. No S on the end of that website. VegasFaceMask.com. Two for 25. We ship them out to you anywhere in the United States. It's the best dang face mask you'll ever have. But commercials aside, yesterday at around 10 o'clock in the morning, the news started sending notifications to my phone that a man had died, possibly drowned, in the Bellagio Fountains. I'm thinking, how is that even possible? Well, here's what happened. It turns out a group of tourists were interacting with what Metro is calling a transient person. I guess that's their verbiage for a homeless person. Um, the homeless person then proceeded to jump into the Bellagio Fountain, swim out to the center, and then couldn't make it back and died out of drowning. So apparently somebody in the group tried to jump in and save the man, but he wasn't able to get very far. And as the Metro describes, he was promptly removed from the fountain. So by then Metro had showed up and they were giving their response. Okay, how could this even possibly happen? You might be asking, is the Bellagio Lake shallow? Well, not really. You see, there's four feet at the first part where you would actually stand on the railing and watch the Bellagio show. That's four feet, that's safety for guests. The center of the fountain where they have to use suction and jets in order to pressurize water and shoot water 50 feet up into the air, 200 feet up, how many feet it is into the air, that is very deep. That's an eight foot depth. So that is dangerous for any human being to swim out to. It was obviously dangerous for this transient person who swam out there. And it was obvious uh, that he couldn't make it back. And now we've lost another person in Las Vegas. Not even to C-19, but to something that's just possibly preventable, which we'll get to in just a moment. Now, there's a couple of schools of thought I'm having on this. I've not read these anywhere else, but I'm thinking one of two things might have happened. Either a transient person who was interacting with tourists said, hey, you want to bet me I can't swim to the center of the fountains? And then he jumped in and tried to do it. The other devilish, insidious thing that I hope didn't happen and no charges have been filed against anybody yet is that those tourists actually put him up to it and said, hey, we'll pay you 20 bucks if you can swim out or something to that effect. Now, no charges have been filed. Obviously, Metro is going to be investigating and asking every single person who is there what actually happened. And we will get to the bottom of it, hopefully, in time. And it doesn't become one of those things that gets buried under the rug because big casino businesses are really good at doing that kind of stuff. So we hope we get to the bottom of it soon. But it just begs the question, could this have been prevented? You see, I have had experiences at the Bellagio Fountain like nobody else's business. I used to work in timeshare, OK? Now, before you call me a scam artist or some kind of scumbag, this is not about me, and I'll just delete your comments. But I used to work as a promoter, which means we would go up to people and try to get them to attend the timeshare presentation for cash gifts or Cirque du Soleil tickets or something really cool. We'd go to the Bellagio because that was where the people would be. On the weekends, they're there. Every 15 minutes, there's a show. On the weekdays, every half an hour, there's a show. And even when it's slow, people go to the Bellagio Fountains because they want to see the cool show. So that being said, I noticed a pattern as I was sitting out there. See, the Bellagio Fountains always has music playing. Sometimes it's the big loud music for the show, but other times it's not. It's the quieter music that just makes people have a cool, chill, chill mellow mood in front of the Bellagio. But every time somebody would jump up on that railing, I would say something like this. There would be a nice female soothing voice that would say, for your safety, please refrain from sitting on the railing of the Bellagio Fountains. Every single time somebody would go up, they would sit on there to take a picture, the music would cut out, there would be that voice every single time. That leads me to believe to the conclusion that possibly there's a human being that's actually monitoring security cameras looking for people sitting on the railing, which leads me to the next question of why didn't they see this yesterday? Now maybe there was 
a lapse in cameras. Maybe one of the cameras wasn't working. Maybe there was a furlough or somebody called out sick or maybe somebody was on a little bathroom break for themselves and they missed it. And even if they did catch it, would they have been able to have gotten there in time? I don't know how many minutes it takes to swim out to the center of the Bellagio Fountains to respond. I have no idea. They obviously just couldn't fly some kind of helicopter or crane to pull pluck them out of the middle of the fountain. But it just begs the question, could the Bellagio have done anything to prevent this aside from building a giant huge chain link fence or something crazy in front of the fountains to prevent people from even getting in? And even then, somebody who wants to get in is going to climb a fence. In that case, yesterday, they climbed over the railing. And unfortunately, he's passed away. And I will say, I've had experiences with Bellagio security in the past. If you've been watching this channel for more than just a couple of weeks, you might have noticed some months ago, I brought a lawn chair out to the strip when we're at the beginning of our shutdown in the middle of March. Within four minutes of me setting up a lawn chair in front of the Bellagio on what I thought was private public property turned out to be private. I had one of the heads of security of Bellagio. Trust me, I know what they look like. It wasn't just a, a newbie green around the edges. Come out to me within four minutes. I know because my video was ticking up there and say, sir, you can't film here. This is private property. So if security can get to me within four minutes, I wonder how quickly security could have gotten to him. Now, is there some kind of a lawsuit? I have no idea. Before you guys go saying anything negative about transient homeless people, I just will remind you this right now. Every single person's life has value. This guy wasn't hatched from an egg. He wasn't a pod person. He has a family somewhere, and if they can identify him, their family might have not even known that he was in Las Vegas to begin with. This is what happens in a lot of cases with homeless folks. They're going to get a nasty call. Is there anything that can be done? Is there a lawsuit? Does the Bellagio have a responsibility to protect you? Well, maybe. I mean, look it. They kicked me off their property for being on private property. So when you're on private property, doesn't it come back to the same law that led to MGM Resorts losing their lawsuit over the October 1st incident? The failure to protect your guests? Is this a failure to protect their guests? I really don't know. I'm not a legal beagle. You guys can tell me in the comments below. But one thing's for certain, this is just another series of things that happens in a city like Las Vegas where for a decade plus, we were high rollers. Everything was great. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Now between C-19 virus, furloughs at the casinos, shows not operating, no sports happening, Happening, empty Raider Stadium it looks like in the fall, no Golden Knights games happening, cancellation of every single event and thing coming through the city. This is definitely a kick you when you're down type moment and it makes it even worse because a human being had to lose their life for us to get into the spotlight in yet another negative way. It just makes me sad inside to see that this happened and I hope that we can get to the bottom of it. But I'm hoping you guys can tell me what might actually be the case. What do you think actually happened with this? Do you think that the tourists put them up to it? Do you think it was just a person not in the right mind at that moment. Do you think the Bellagio could have done something to prevent anything? I'm really not sure myself, but I do know one thing. Let's say a prayer for the families, if you swing that way, and they'll say some nice words. Hopefully they uh, are um, not too tragic stricken, and uh, it's a loss. It doesn't matter what circumstances. A loss of life is a tragic loss of life doesn't matter. Well, anyways, my name is Steven and I am not leaving Las Vegas. So with that, I will tell you I'm a Vegas blogger. Hope you would like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If you made it this far in the video and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. A lot of you guys are watching, commenting all the time, but you're not subscribed to the channel. It would really help me out. You guys can head out over to the Patreon if you guys want to be in the credits of the videos and get all the extra goodies there. Vegasfacemask.com. No S at the end. The only two face masks you'll ever need is baseball season. So even though there's cardboard cutouts in the seats, you can rock one of these if you want to. Two for 25 bucks. And I'll see you guys in another video where we'll talk about hopefully some positive stuff. This is just something we had to talk about because there's so many questions that have been raised. It just blows me away. Now's the time of the video where I say three, two, one, click. Three, two, one, are you ready for this? And click.
Thank you.